Hi, everyone. Welcome to Niche Engineering's 2021 Introduce a Girl to Engineering Day virtual panel. I'm Jen Johnson, and I'm a civil engineer at Niche Engineering who is currently serving as a project manager in our planning group. Niche Engineering has been hosting our annual Introduce a Girl to Engineering Day for 6th to 12th grade girls since 2002. Our goal has been to increase girls' interest in engineering by showcasing a different type of engineering and shifting how and sharing information about how rewarding a career in, in engineering can be. Um, while our typical event doesn't really look like this here on Zoom, um, we really try to integrate hands-on activities every year um, that talks about a different type of engineering. We've obviously had to rethink that this year and last year with the COVID-19 pandemic. Last year, we shared a number of resources for activities that can be done at home, and you can still find those on our website if you're interested. And this year, we're really ex excited to bring back um, one of our favorite events from our live event, which is the virtual panel. We're going to have a number of women that you see here um, talk about their insights in the studies and fields of engineering that they're currently practicing. So I'm going to kick off our panel today by asking our five engineers to briefly introduce themselves by sharing your names, educational background, and current profession or major. So Brittany, would you mind starting? Hi, I'm Brittany Veek. I'm a civil engineer. I graduated from Tufts with bachelor's degree, and I'm currently a senior project engineer at Niche Engineering in Boston. Chanel. Good morning. My name is Chanel Jackson. I am also a civil engineer at Niche Engineering. I graduated in 2015 from Cal Poly State, San Luis Obispo. Bella. Hi, my name is Isabel Ventresca, and I'm currently a student at UMass Lowell, and I'm majoring in biomedical engineering. I'm really excited to be concentrating in cell and tissue engineering. Marina. Hi, my name is Marina Fernandez. I'm the town engineer for the town of Milton. Um, my background is in civil and environmental engineering. I got a undergraduate degree from UMass Dartmouth and a master's degree at UMass Amherst. And finally, Veronica. Hi everyone, I'm Veronica Soto. I majored in industrial engineering, graduated in 2017 from Worcester Polytechnic Institute, and I'm currently a senior associate at Red Ventures, which is a really cool uh, digital marketing company um, based in Puerto Rico. Great, thank you so much for that introduction. We're really excited to get to know each of you better. Um, so let's start with a question about how you first became interested in engineering. Bella, do you wanna take that first? Sure, so I actually attended um, for many years the Niche Engineering Introduce a Girl Day, and it wasn't until after I attended three or four years that I really decided that I was actually interested in engineering. Um, you guys actually put on a biomedical engineering day where we got to build prosthetics and we had a little competition with that. And I just realized that that is something that I actually really love to do and that I would want to pursue it in the future. Marina, how about you? Marina, I'm sorry, you're on mute. Thank you, sorry about that. Uh, so um, I'm originally from Brazil and English was not my first language. I came to the US when I was 12. Um, and my stronghold had always been in uh, writing and reading. Uh, but once I came here, it was really difficult to catch up. But math was still the same. Two plus two was, has always been four everywhere. So I really hit, hung tight to uh, math and uh, just kind of discovered it. And uh, once I was excited about the environment, I, I learned that I would make a tiny bit more or perhaps a bit more uh, being an environmental engineer rather than environmental scientist. So I did that um, and have enjoyed ever since. Thanks, Veronica. How about you? How did you get started? So for me, when I was in high school, um, trying to figure out college and what to study, I took an aptitude test with my college counselor. I always knew as I was good at math, I liked that class, but I always thought I would go for like business or finance or something along those lines, which was actually what showed up in my results. But when I showed my mom, she was like, what about industrial engineering? It seems really similar. I think you're really good at math. 
um, and it was more technical and, and more like math intensive. So I went for it, ended up in an all engineering school. Um, and it was really, I'm really glad I ended up going that route. It's so interesting to hear how we all have a different um, background story and how we found engineering, but we're all still here in this world. Um, Brittany, I'm curious how it was for you to be a female student at engineering school. I know we hear so much about how sometimes there aren't as many women um, in engineering school. How was that experience for you? Well, for me, I think, so I went to Tufts and Tufts has a pretty high percentage of female engineering students. And I think especially in the civil department, which I was in, um, it is closer to 50-50 female and male engineers. Um, so I didn't really feel like it defined my experience or was something that I noticed that I was maybe in like a minority in school. Um, yeah, it didn't really impact my experience. Bella, could you talk a little bit about your experience that you have right now um, as an engineering student? Um, of course. So actually, I find that there are a lot more women in engineering majors now, um, which is really comfortable because, you know, we're all learning the same thing. So it's nice to be able to go to many different people to have different um, answers or, you know, problems that you can solve together. Um, I think it's definitely improved um, the ratio, especially in um, biomedical engineering. I know it's a more female heavy engineering major compared to some others, but I see a lot of other women walking around campus in STEM majors, so it's nice. <laughs> I know it is exciting to see how that's changed even in the last five or 10 years. Um, Chanel, for you, what was the most important thing that you learned in school? I think the most important thing I learned was to dig a little deeper and to not just memorize how to do something, but to like really understand the why and the mechanics behind the thing you were memorizing because you learn so much in school. It's hard to keep up sometimes, but it's so worth the effort to go a little bit further so you can truly understand something. And then the other thing I learned was that it's so good to diversify what you're studying, um, like stay up to date with passions and hobbies and don't just let your major become your main narrative in your in your life. Absolutely, that can be a challenge because engineering school is intense, but I think that makes it even more important to keep, keep your hobbies and, and making having study groups like you were saying, Bella, to make it a little bit more fun when you're when you're solving those tough problems. Um, what about you, Bella? What's the most important thing that you're learning right now in school? Um, I would definitely say asking for help and like I already said, doing study groups because I've struggled in the past with asking for help, whether it just be from a friend or a professor. And I found that it really helps you just to understand the material better and really get through that tough exam week or a tough week of just reading. Um, so yeah, I would say that. <laughs> I think you're right. I think even as a practicing engineer, you know, 15 years in, we still have to know to ask questions because we don't know everything. And it, that's why we work with all of our amazing colleagues. So that's definitely a great lesson. Um, Britt, what did you what would you say are the characteristics that you think make the most successful engineer? Um, the ability to work with other people. In college, we had a lot of problem sets and you could do them on your own, but Oftentimes we'd have a study group or something and we would work on them together and being able to learn from other people was really what helped me succeed in engineering school. And as an engineer now, we work with other companies and teams within niche that and we need to be able to work with people at higher levels than us and lower levels than us and be able to learn from everyone because everyone has a different perspective on things and can provide different information and help you grow as an engineer. What about you, Marina? What do you think makes a successful engineer? You'll have to unmute, I'm sorry. I think it's compartmentalizing problems. Sometimes you're thrown a problem that is too big and you're not going to be able to solve it at one moment. But if you can break it down into steps, uh, and always have that mentality um, certainly is uh, what makes a successful in engineer. Um, so always think about what's the next step 
uh, and keep moving it um, forward. Yeah, that's great. Um, I totally agree with that. What about you, Veronica? What are you? What do you find makes for a successful engineer? I think for me, and I really identified with Chanel's answer earlier, is in digging deeper and curiosity to continue to learn, push yourself outside your your comfort zone to learn new things, diversifying outside of your major, um, not being afraid of taking the hard classes um, or taking on bigger projects just because you'll probably be able to achieve those and being involved in extracurriculars as well. So like going outside of your, your classes and meeting new people and getting involved on school. Great, thank you all for those answers. Um, what would you say was your favorite class in high school and kind of related what types of high school courses do you think are really important for uh, girls that might be considering engineering? Uh, Chanel, you want to take that first? Sure. So similar narrative that's going to go through all my answers is staying well-rounded and going after all of your different passions to figure out who you are and what you like. So when I was in high school, I didn't have any specific engineering course options. It was just the standard physics, math, that kind of thing. So I think my favorite course I ended up taking was actually an English course where I, I just love to read. So that, and then I also loved a physics class I took. And then um, I figured out what I didn't like as well. So being able to close some doors as well as examine what I was liking, I would recommend analyzing in that way because it helps you figure out what you don't want to do as much as you do want to do. Absolutely. It's definitely a process, isn't it? Um, Britt, what about you? I think it's helpful if, if in high school you can take those math and science classes because you're going to have to take them in college and I found it really helpful in college. You're in a brand new environment with new teachers, new people and just completely different experiences. So it was helpful to have been exposed to that material before. But that being said, my favorite class in high school was my German class and um, in the engineering program at Tufts you had to take a certain number of humanities classes and I was able to make all of those German classes. So I was also able to take five semesters of that in college, which I mean, I may have been one of the only engineers at like my year that took that many language classes, but um, just follow up with what you're interested in, not just what you need to take. What about you, Bella? Um, I definitely agree with Brittany. Having a background in those science and math classes really helps, especially since professors teach in different ways. So having that background is really nice to have when you're in that new environment. Um, I know a lot of people say physics for engineering. I didn't have a great relationship with physics, um, but I really loved chemistry and I took AP chemistry and I just loved it. Um, and it's especially helpful, again, when you get to college, just having that background. Yeah, that plays right into what Chanel was saying, right, about what you do like and what you don't like. And there's so many types of engineering that no matter what your favorite class is, it kind of can can shake out that way. Uh, what about you, Marina? You had so mentioned this is for high school, right? Yes, for high school. Uh, I was very happy to have taken calculus uh, because it really prepared me, put me one step, although I took calculus again in, col in, in college uh, by taking AP calculus in high school, I was very well prepared. Um, yeah, so if, if you get the chance, do take hard maths. Um, and I took AP environmental science, which was really awesome because that's the reason why I took engineering. Uh, for the purposes of the, the students that are listening in, uh, and I'll speak a bit about it uh, a bit more later on, uh, I do remember having to fight really hard uh, in order to get to AP math in high school. Initially, they didn't want to put me in AP math, uh, although um, I, I, I felt like I was ready and I felt I could do well. So it was really pushing hard and, and, and being taking the tests and uh, letting my, prof my teachers at the time know that I was ready and I, that I could take the, the hard maths and, and, and hard science classes. And I'm glad that I fought for it. Uh, even as a student, I was fighting for myself because I didn't really have, you know, my mom didn't really know how to explain to the teachers that I had that ability. Although my my English was lacking, I was really good in science, like I said before, and math. So uh, if you feel like you're ready, definitely push those boundaries. Definitely uh, speak up for yourself. 
see what needs to you need to do in order for you to be taking those hard maths and because um, they will pay off. That's such a great lesson. Uh, what about you, Veronica? So I think everyone's pretty much touched on this, but making sure that you enjoy math and science and problem solving are key to pursuing engineering. Um, my favorite class in high school was math. By far, I took all of the math electives I could in high school. I, I enjoyed the science classes as well. One that I would have liked to take in high school, but I didn't really have the opportunity is a computer science elective. Um, which is a pretty grow fast growing field. Um, and I didn't know what it was until senior year of college when it was too late to like pursue that. So definitely if you have that available, I would recommend picking up a class to see if you like it. That's great advice. Um, all right, so now we're gonna shift gears and we're gonna think back to when you were in college as an undergraduate. At the time, did you think that you would be doing today, you know, how things have transpired, Britt? No, I think when I started civil engineering at Tufts, um, I think I thought what most people think, like civil engineering is bridges um, and that it's not all what I do. So I, I didn't even know that what I did, what I do now existed at the time. I understand. I switched majors three times in, in different types of engineering, so I definitely <laughs> didn't know. What about you, Veronica? I agree, not at all. I mean, I knew going into industrial engineering, I would have kind of flexibility to continue exploring different industries after I graduated, just because it can be applied to pretty much anything. Um, so I started out in manufacturing. I actually worked in supply chain for about two years and a half. And then after that, I decided to transition to digital marketing, which is, I'm really happy there. I kind of get to apply more analytical skills um, which I really enjoyed in college. So you pretty much learn as you go on every job, but the engineering skills will definitely be useful as you continue on. Uh, all right, now we're gonna talk a little bit about what our days are like today. So Chanel, could you tell us a little bit more about a typical day um, at work for you? Sure, it's pretty flexible and it varies a little bit day to day, but for the most part, I am doing some kind of design work, whether it's laying out a stormwater system or working in AutoCAD. We do a lot in AutoCAD, Civil 3D, SSA, so some kind of software. And I am now at the point where I have a little bit of experience under my belt, so I'm switching more into a delegating role into more of a managing of younger engineers. So I'm doing a little bit of that and then a lot of emails a few internal meetings and an external meeting sprinkled in in there. So it looks a little different every day, but it's usually full of, of project teamwork. That's the fun part, right? <laughs> Definitely. Um, Bella, what about you? What is a typical day like for you? I know it's a little different this year than it would be typically on campus, but maybe talk a little bit about um, both aspects for you. Um, yeah, of course. So when I create my schedule at the beginning of each semester, I look at how many courses I have to take. And um, as an engineering major, it's usually a more heavier course load. Um, so you really have to delegate when you can have breaks throughout the day. So I typically like to start with morning classes and I usually have like one or two and then take a nice break, like no classes for lunch so then I can get some work done, um, figure things out and then an afternoon class or two. Um, and it usually stays like that throughout the week with labs and um, different lecture meetings. Um, but it's also nice to have evenings free where then you can go to club meetings and um, do different activities that are on campus. So you can have more flexibility when doing your work. And Marina, what about you? What What is a typical day like for you um, in your role now? So my this role is new to me. I have been a town engineer for about two months. Uh, I used to be a consultant engineer like uh, Jennifer and Brittany. And um, so this role is pretty new. I the, My typical day can vary greatly. I answer calls from the public in regards to their water, their sewer, pavement. Uh, we, put, we put out pavement projects. Uh, we have several ongoing transportation projects. I'm looking at a huge board of stuff that we have going. Uh, we have uh, work done in the sewer, uh, water. Uh, we're also working on stormwater. 
Uh, we're trying to find illicit connections. We're looking at drainage network. And uh, we're also paving the streets and taking uh, building permits. And I must have forgotten a bunch of other stuff that we're also doing. Yes, there is never really a dull moment in engineering, <laughs> whether you're in school <laughs> or a practicing engineer, that's for sure. Um, you've got to stay on your toes, right? <laughs> um, I'm going to ask Britt now, what do you like most about being an engineer? Is it the constant day-to-day -day differences? or? <laughs> yeah, I think I actually find the, the work that I do to be very interesting. I'm always learning something new. Um, I really enjoy that. And then I think you don't really think of engineering as something creative. You think of like r running calculations and math, but it's really about creative problem solving and you're never going to encounter the same exact problem more than once. So it's just you really need to be able to think things through and think outside the box. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that's some of what you had all said about what was the most important thing that you learned <laughs> in school, right? It was how to how to stay adaptive like that. Um, what about you, Chanel? What do you like most about being an engineer? Um, I like that we're solving real world problems with real solutions that if all goes well most people will not think about but will greatly benefit from when it comes to sanitation and stormwater and all those different things so i think that's really empowering um, and one way to do that is by designing to mitigate climate impact so just being able to incorporate big picture problems into our problem solving is is motivating Absolutely. It's so great to know that um, the work that you're doing day to day is is making a huge impact on on people all over the world um, and in, in your community you might drive by it every day, which is such a great feeling. Um, all right. So we're going to wrap up now. And before we do, I was hoping that each of you would be able to share a piece of advice that you would give to girls who are curious about engineering. Um, so we'll start with you, Brittany. I would say figure out what you are truly interested in and try to pick your career based on that. Don't necessarily pick a career based on what you think you're good at. Um, you'll be more fulfilled and happier in the long run if you're actually interested in and excited about what you do, not just being good at it. What about you, Chanel? What piece of advice would you give? Completely agree with Brittany. Um, I'm six years into a career and I'm still figuring out what I'm passionate about. We're all changing and evolving and it's important to just say yes to seminars and yes to meetups and different groups that you can get involved in and get exposure to different ideas. So I would say just diversifying your interests and continue to pursue and figure out what, what you're interested in. What about you, Bella? What advice would you give? Um, I would say having a good support group, um, whether that be in school or like in your job after school, I think having a nice group of people who will support you through changes or your test that week is great to have. And, you know, you can be based in school or work and then you guys can relax and like watch a movie after. And it's a nice way to be focused and also enjoy all the things of life. What about you, Marina? What advice would you give? Uh, the advice I would give uh, folks would be uh, be a team player, but don't hesitate to push back. So whatever your role is right now as a student, as a high school student, someone is telling you you may not, you, know, you, you don't want to take that math course, push back. If you want it, do it. Uh, again, be a team player, understand why are they saying what they're saying. And sometimes it is they're just telling you you may need to... Um, you know, take harder courses or study a bit more, and maybe that's why they are hesitant. So listen to why they're hesitant, but don't be afraid to push back. And, and that piece of advice goes for now, and that piece of advice goes for when you go for a job position uh, or when you go to a school, uh, when you choose the school you're going, when you're when you're choosing the the job, and then even further down your career when you're looking for promotions or also to uh, move either laterally or, or otherwise in your career. Absolutely. Um, and let's wrap up with you, Veronica. What advice would you give? 
I would say to try to talk to women um, in the field and or college and try to find a mentor, try to expose yourself to either online classes and or like a day in the life um, of a field that you're really interested in to, to really understand if that's something that you're um, interested in pursuing and, and getting all your questions answered or ahead of taking that big step into college. And lastly, I would say if you're like just scared because you think you might not fit in or you might not do well in engineering school, then definitely don't let that stop you from like pursuing that because it's definitely doable and, and you'll be able to achieve it. Great. Well, I want to thank each of you for joining me today. Um, your stories are really inspiring and I really appreciate all the insight and advice you're giving all of our viewers today um, of this panel. Um, I hope that all of the girls who are watching this are as inspired as I am by all of you and will consider learning more or pursuing a career in engineering. So thank you all and we really hope that we will see you all back in person next year. Thank you.